This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory, and in this video we're going to go through part three of our section two, three practice tasks for the Microsoft Office 2016 study guide for Microsoft Excel expert exam. Let's get started. So our final task here is to display our amortization schedule worksheet and do the following. In cell D3, which we have highlighted here, we're going to insert a spin button control. So our spin button controls are on the developer tab, insert, and spin button control, which is the one that has the up and down arrow on it. Next, we need to draw that in. And I, I typically try and have them match the cell that I have them located at, but, but that's not uh, a requirement. It's whatever you prefer. So our spin button is now uh, in place. However, it hasn't been linked yet. Okay, so let's uh, right click on this. We're gonna go into properties and adjust our format control. So we are gonna link it to cell C3, which is the amortization cell. We are going to configure it with a minimum value of one and a maximum value of 30. Uh, we will leave the incremental change set at one. So when I click OK, now this spin controller is going to control the value in this box. So let's test it out and see if it works. If I hit the down arrow, this goes down to one. You'll notice our amortization schedule at the bottom will change as I trigger these. If I try and click down again, it doesn't go any lower than one. So we know that our minimum value was working correctly. And now every time I toggle this, our amortization period is going to go up by one year. So if this is set up right, I should be able to go up to 30 and then no further. Great. So I'm confident now that our spin control is working properly. Our next task is to go into cell F2 and insert a combo box control. Combo boxes are located in the same place. Our developer tab, insert, and here is our combo box. Again, we'll draw this in for where we would like it to be located. Great. And now I'm going to hit properties and we get another dialog box here. So our input range is going to be the cells in G4, or excuse me, G3 through to G6. Our output is going to be linked to cell G7. We'll click OK. All right. So let's test this out and see if it works. When I hit annual, sure enough, what's happened now is whatever the user selects from the combo box, this is going to give the output of which value they've chosen. So it's not actually going to say annual or semi-annual down here, but it'll give us one if it's annual, two if it's semi-annual, three if it's quarterly, four if it's monthly. So let's take a look and see if that works. Quarterly works and monthly works. So what's happening is they've created a formula here that uh, impacts the total periods and the adjusted interest rate based upon our time basis selected in this drop-down box. So when we are at annual here, they're setting the time factor to one, the percentage rate to be 6%, which ties into cell C2 here, and 30 total payment periods. If we go to quarterly, it's showing that there's now four periods per year. That adjusts the rate down to 1.5%, but increases our total periods by 120. That wraps up all the tasks for section 2.3. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe so you're kept up to date when new videos get posted. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. Thanks for watching.